so I had this access malfunction on me, like this one did a while back, so I had to rebuild it. Problem was, I was cutting my intake for this new build. Now, if you could see at the bottom, I just manually chewed that out a little lower, all the way around it, not to damage the uh, edge. So what I got is grease on there. And I took an end mill and I cut off the top just below. If it'll focus below that chewed up thing. We're going to use this as a bearing surface against a good cut to try and save this piece. So I'm going to do this by hand and just work this around and try and cut that off flat. And then when it gets cut off, we flip it over and that's going to be the intake for my new build. Uh, the other side's going to get matched to it, but we got to try and save this edge now. So let's see if we can do it. But yeah, if you could see, other than, well, I shouldn't have put grease on it yet, but if you could see there's that little edge all the way around. It's because I just hand did it quick. There's no way to cut that, you know, by hand. <laughs> so, we're going to do this and do the uh, bearing method. I'm going to use this flat shank as a bearing. Alright, here we go. Alright, well, hopefully you guys will be able to see me lose a finger trying this. <laughs> Alright. Let's see how we did though. I get that edge cleaned up. Not bad. It's passable. Rest is all uh, little stuff. Oh, right there, we gotta get it a little more. Not bad, not bad. Right in that corner. Get this all uh, my burning this cutter up. This is a uh, redneck engineering to fix this poor thing. Oh, I see what's going on. So I ground it all down to one tooth. And we're gonna try and get that edge really clean. So I'm gonna give this a go next. Because there is a little bit of a lip all the way around, but I think that's because the center was keeping it up the way I ground it. So we just ground off all three, and we're going to try and that last little bit with one tooth. Same way on here. Alright, so here's the one tooth cutter. I came really close to getting a nice finish, but I figured what the hell I already killed that cutter. 
I never use it for anything else, so let's give it a go. Oh yeah, that cut so much better. Okay, yeah, that cleaned up the whole edge beautiful. So that's the one tooth cutter. Let me just wipe this off quick. Oh God, yeah, it's night and day. Look at that, it's a nice edge now. I mean, doing this by hand, not exactly ideal. These are all just swirl marks, I mean, just vibration. Missed a little tiny bit right there, I don't care. At this point, Definitely not bad. Hey guys, check this out. Somebody's actually going to use WD-40 for what it's intended for. A cleaning solvent. Isn't that amazing? It's actually what it's supposed to be used for. It's not a milling, greasing, cutting... Whatever the hell people use it for on YouTube thing. It's a solvent to clean greasy items that no longer work or penetrate rust. So, yeah. One in a million, huh? Bet you never saw that on YouTube. I haven't cut in. You know, it's funny. I love when people are spraying it all over something trying to cut shit with it, like aluminum. They don't realize that, like, when the polymers heat up in it, it actually makes it worse. <laughs> but, anyways, yeah. That's the intended purpose, you know, of WD-40. It's a solvent slash cleaner slash, you know, penetrator for, like, rust and stuff. But, I just think... It's hilarious that people use this for, like, everything on YouTube. But I don't think I've actually seen anyone clean a part with it yet. Till now. This will be a first. Awesome. Oh, if I could get my camera to focus on this damn thing, no matter what. There we go. Man, this thing's impossible to get it to focus on, but that's it. All done. Clean it up with a scotch spray. Like one of those little dollar store uh, scrubby pads. Anyways, on the back here, I got to cut the hole for the uh, intake. And these bolts will actually line up. They're 1.8 inches. And I think these are 48 millimeter, something like that. It's close to there. So anyways, there's going to be a quarter inch stud coming through. And I'll mount a car boot. And we'll get all this going gonna be good all right so a lot of people are asking they're like oh that's a tiny hole intake in that dude you guys gotta understand this is not a tiny intake 
That's how much further it goes past that hole, both directions. This outline of that oval, which goes all the way, that is the intake. <laughs> this gasket restricts like half of it, okay? So what I'm going to do is cut this oval out. It's actually one inch tall by one and five eighths wide. And I'm going to do that on the back side of that big oval with the bolt pattern to an adapter for a motorcycle because I have absolutely nothing that fits that. So by having that pattern, at least I know I can put a motorcycle intake on it and go from there. And this will be straight up and I could do whatever I need after that point. But I can literally cut this all the way along that line around. So that's the big thing people don't realize. The intake wall is actually only about an eighth of an inch off that screw hole on each side. Oval. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the reasoning for this. I'm going to make a whole plate. Now I have something manageable that I can mount a carb to that I know I can anyways. So... Anyhow, that hole right there, by the way, and people were asking, that's 32 millimeter. So, anyways, we're going to cut the right one there, and then we'll bevel everything in the inside so it's all nice and sloped and, you know, good flow. But anyways, I figured I'd share that because a lot of people didn't understand the whole point to this, and... I gotta have some kind of adapter that I can hook to. So, here we go. I think it came out pretty decent. I'm really glad I could save it. But if you guys can see, you could never even know. I had like a massive failure with that. It cut the edge beautiful. So, these are 48 millimeter, center to center. It's 1.8, which is pretty damn close, and considering these are quarter inch, we're going to put them in. They're deep, too. It's uh, about three quarters of an inch, so like, say, 22 millimeter for metric people. Deep. So we're going to put that in, mount a boot on it so I can mount carb stuff, and we'll just bolt it straight in with some Allen bolts. And we'll refinish, we'll finish this side so it's all flat for that gasket. That's why I'm trying to save it. But anyways, OEM, something we could use. Here we go. 